Good morning from Bismarck, North Dakota. Uh, it's sometime in the morning. I just got up. I'm getting up. <laughs> now it's 12.20. I was up really late last night practicing piano though. Um, yeah, this is Bismarck. Not not a very stellar view of looking at the McDonald's. <laughs> but uh, way out in the distance, there's some nice plateaus. I said I came on Tuesday. Um, and so there's rehearsal on Tuesday, rehearsal on Thursday, concerts Friday, Saturday. Uh, but then I stayed in the hotel for five days, so Tuesday all the way through Sunday. I'll probably go over to the, the hall. The hall is literally right across. I mean, if I go downstairs and everything, the, the hall is um, uh, right next to the hotel. almost the day of the concert. Today is a rehearsal. Um, and usually, as a pianist, um, then you get the entire concert hall to yourself the morning of to practice. And then the piano that I'm playing, um, it's very common that you'll see Steinways. Um, I think that probably at all my concerts, I'd say like 70% of the time, like in a professional concert like this, like 70% of the time it's a Steinway. Um, if not, then it's a Yamaha. But usually they'll, they'll be grand pianos like this um, and nine foots. Um, so concert halls will have uh, uh, nine foots. This concert hall actually has two of them, uh, one Steinway and then one Baldwin. So this, this big floor then, this is an elevator that goes directly down. Um, and then there's a storage room down there that holds the two pianos in a acclimatized room. It's also kind of... Um, uh, um, distracting, I guess, when you're trying to play. Mm -hmm. If it's your first time playing like that in a concert, not only are people like looking at you and, you know, do you feel the lights and everything, but then also like when you see all the mm -hmm. action, all the action moving and everything in there, that uh, it, it can distract a lot of newbies. Um, I remember my very first concert um, that when I was doing that, that I, I did get really distracted as well. And uh, in the middle of the concert, I think it was, um, it was like a 25 minute long piece and uh, right in the middle of it um, I was getting really distracted not only by the audience of like 2,000 people but then also then you know the, the orchestra looking at you and trying to follow the conductor so you're trying to watch your hands memorize what's going on and watch the conductor and make sure you stay in time and um, that I just completely lost where I was at and uh, um, for like four straight minutes I was just making up stuff um, nobody noticed just making up stuff then to try and um, uh, just try and stay in it. Before then I finally heard the one note by the oboe or something and I just knew that, okay, that's my cue and I was able to pull back in and nobody ever noticed, uh, nobody knew different, so. Usually the rehearsals are, are at night, so these ones I think they're seven, seven to nine or something uh, each of those nights. So in that other time then, I just get to chill at the hotel in the morning or practice. Um, I get to come here um, in the morning and I can just practice for as many hours as I want in the morning. So usually at this point I'm just, I'm running over stuff, just touching up real small things. At this, at this point, everything should already be done. For this symphony, what I'm doing in particular um, is that beside having an entire half of the concert where I'm performing the Nutcracker, um, then the other half of the concert, um, then I, I rewrote a whole bunch of, or I rewrote the orchestral score, so all the brass parts, the woodwind parts, um, and the percussion parts, rewrote it into solo piano, um, because of, since it's during COVID here, they had to cut all those instruments, that's why you see it all socially distanced. Um, I'm not wearing my mask right now because I'm, I've been the only person here all day. Because they cut out all of the brass and everything, then I rewrote it all into a solo piano version. Um, it was kind of my first time really doing that on a, on a big scale. But um, because of that, um, I'm 
checking to make sure all the balances and everything is okay and I'm not leaving the orchestra hanging or whatever. Um, so uh, today that's what I'm practicing. Um, I was rewriting the score again this morning, um, trying to tweak it and make sure it all flows along, the balance is okay. Um, and it'll, it'll turn out really well. Um, also, just because during COVID, then beside having the entire audience, or having, having the orchestra spaced out, um, then we also spaced out um, for the audience. Uh, so I think they're only allowing a certain amount of the audience in. Like you have to be six feet apart from, each party has to be six feet away from each other. Um, but uh, they're also doing uh, video cameras for the, they're doing a, a live stream concert as well. So for this live stream concert, then in that box over there, they're setting up a camera there, setting up a camera over there. There'll be one in the back of the house. And I think they said there's gonna be one over here or something. Um, so you'll, you'll get one that has a really nice view down the keys and another one that has a great view, I guess, of the entire orchestra. Um, but uh, it's just another, another way to adapt. Um, a part of me did think, you know, like, is it, is it safe to be doing concerts um, during COVID? And I think as, as long as you're taking all the necessary precautions and everything, um, and that we're all trying to be as safe as we can, that uh, the arts are very important, of course, to everybody during this time. So I wanted to, to keep that going. Of course, I mean, there's also something to be said that, you know, musicians are just like everybody else. Like, you know, we have to eat too, so we still have to work. Um, and so maybe that's that's part of the factor too. But uh, I, like I said, most importantly to me, it's it's to keep things alive. It'd be really sad if we went into it like a two year long winter of, of no music, no arts. I just think about what everybody else is doing um, during COVID. You know, when you're spending all these countless hours on your own at home, like you're not sitting there and just staring at a wall, you know, and you're definitely not sitting there doing work the entire time, like we all know. Um, you know, so everybody's passing the time with arts of some capacity. So, you know, whether it's people learning to paint, whether it's people learning new languages, you know, you're listening to music. You know, there's, there's all these kinds of arts that people are doing, um, and it really proves to me how necessary the arts are right now. Um, so anything I can do to, to kind of help keep feeding that. I, I feel like it's my artistic responsibility to keep doing that. I'm just getting warmed up. Uh, concert's in about an hour. This is the first night of the concert. Um, so it's 6.30 now, exactly one hour until game time. So now I'm down in the, um, uh, the humidif, uh, this the storage room actually for the other piano. So I'm practicing now on a nine foot Baldwin um, just to get rehearsed. And then there's that piano over there. There's an upright here. And then also they have a, a harpsichord, which is, this place is amazing. They have like all of this stuff. This is really nice. And this piano is still a really nice Baldwin. So, uh, yeah, so now I'm just gonna run through some music. Uh, I've already been practicing for the past hour or so, but um, just to make sure my fingers kind of stay fresh so that when I get out there, I'm walking straight on the stage and I'm going right into the concert, so I don't get to warm up on the stage, so. Moments before the concert. Uh, the concert starts in about 10 minutes. Um, but uh, I figured I should, I should talk about um, people getting nervous. I don't really get nervous at concerts anymore. Um, I think it's, oh, actually, walk right in the back. Walk right behind the stage. Um, I don't really get nervous there anymore. I used to get really nervous at concerts because you imagine everything that could go wrong. Um, but now it's just like, um, I, I once had, um, uh, a mentor in the, the, one of the first times that I was playing with the symphony and he told me that if you don't remember how the performance went it means that it went really well which I think is probably kind of true um, so yeah like I guess I don't get worried don't get worried anymore 
I say hi, Mike. <laughs> I like Mike's sweatshirt. <laughs> He's got all the style. This is the conductor, Beverly. Hi. I'm shooting a video. I was gonna put this on YouTube later. Oh, a, a day in the life as a concert pianist. <laughs> what it's like. Uh, I was just talking about how I, I don't really get nervous anymore. I mean, do you ever get nervous before concerts? The only time I get nervous is when it's really difficult music and I could, there's something I could really do that would throw the whole thing into a train wreck. I suppose, yeah. Otherwise, I don't get nervous anymore. Um, I don't really get nervous to play either. It's good, it's good, yeah. <laughs> I notice that yeah, the, the more and more you perform, it's just like, it just becomes very natural. I kind of like that nervous energy too. Yeah, exactly. It gives something life, like it's live. Yeah. This is what the holiday spirit is like in the United States. Um, so, <laughs> very hard rock right now. <laughs> I was playing the Nutcracker just a second ago. But um, uh, this city is very festive on Bemidji. So this is the lakefront and my hotel is st staying over there. But if you go down this way, um, the lake is uh, probably gonna be a good like 10 miles or so long. This, this is the first year that they put up uh, this Bemidji sign. It makes it look kind of, I noticed this actually in a lot of Arabic countries. Um, like in Tunisia they do this a lot, but especially in like, uh, in Russia and everything. Um, and this is the main street, so it goes all the way along the river. Um, this is old Native American land. And then, this thing that you're seeing, these huge statues, these are called, um, Paul and, or, Paul and, um, Babe the Blue, the Blue Ox. It's, um, 
a local tradition. Um, you know, I'm not entirely sure what the, the full story on the tradition is. Um, but of course, Paul is a lumberjack. Um, you know, I should just ask. I'm trying to figure out us, what is exactly the tradition of Paul and the and like Absolutely babe? Nothing. I have no idea what the story is. Well, there's one story that Paul's footprint made like Bemidji. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, that makes sense. That makes yeah. sense. 